and welcome to learn system view in five minutes. This is tutorial 26 on getting started with HTL and system view co-simulation. Before we proceed and talk about how to run HTL code inside system view, let's take a step back and understand what are we trying to accomplish here. So remember tutorial one where I gave you introduction about Pathwave system design tool and its capability. So this is one of the slide which we discuss where we we kind of emphasized that no matter um, designers using their own individual tools such as MATLAB, HTL, C++, you know, 3D uh, design tools or circuit design tools like ADS or Golden Gate, or even using some of these measurement softwares uh, for testing their IPs, all these IPs can be linked to system view so that once you are done with the individual block development, you could put all this together to, to run a complete system characterization. And that's one of the greatest strengths of system view, allowing you to bring in various form of IPs and, and perform the complete system simulation. So the, the stuff we are doing now and we will be doing in next few videos, it's towards building this vision and after a few tutorial videos, will you will start to see a complete composite system implementation with various IPs all coming together inside system view to allow you to completely characterize your system. Now with this background, hope you're excited and let's proceed. So to run uh, an HDL uh, code or to bring any HDL code inside system view, we go to hardware design library that's where all of our fixed point blocks are located. So in case you want to implement your own fixed point logics in system view and want to develop your fixed point designs, you could do so by using these blocks. Now, one of the blocks there is an HDL um, block, and this allows you to include your HDL files. Now, if you are using a lot of Xilinx IPs and you have those uh, bot over IP cores, you can also get Xilinx IP integrator. And here you can bring in your own you know, Xilinx IP cores to be used with the rest of the system view blocks. But right now I will just focus on a general purpose HDL code, which could be handwritten or which could be generated from any other tool apart from system view. Now, once you want to bring in HDL files, uh, we double click on this block. We select the language uh, which you want to use, and then we add the HDL files in order of compilation. So in my case, I only have one simple HDL file which is representing an adder, just to keep things simple. And here is the adder.vhd. But if you have many files, you can add them in order of compilation. Now, in order to see what's there in HDL file, we can just simply edit file and look at the HDL code. Now here you notice I have two inputs A and B, and I have two outputs carry and sum. And all these are controlled by a custom parameter here called n. And this n, if defined externally, that's fine, and then it can dynamically change the, the word length of A and B as well as the output. So in turn, it can change the precision, right? So once we have that code um, in system view, we can go proceed to HDL settings. We have the top level entity module, and as per our code, it's adder. If you have any other clock signal or any clock enable signal reset, those can be specified here. But this one is just a simple combinational logic, doesn't need uh, any of those. So we go to IO, we can define manually the number of input pins, number of output pins, or we can just simply inherit from the top level HDL model file. And here you can notice we have A and B defined as input. We have two outputs, carry and sum. So carry would be one word length and uh, sum we can define as four to start with. Later, if you want, we can change it. Now, if you have any other library dependency to run your HTL code, you could add here. In this case, it's not required. And in custom parameters, we can attach any custom parameter for our HTL code. Like in this code, we have a custom parameter and, and we can initialize with a value. So in our case, it's four. So that now everything is synchronized. And now notice as soon as you do that, the, the symbol takes the shape as needed. And now we have two inputs and two outputs here and we can put them in a placeholder here. So what we have going as the input are two constants, six and one, and which will be added and the output should be available at the sum plot. 
And in terms of simulation, I'm just running the simulation for one sample because basically we just want to see the result in the output. Now, in order for system view to find the model sim so that it can run it behind the scene or invoke it behind the scene, that setting can be done from tools, options, code generation tab. And here you can define your model sim or Questa executable path so that system view can launch that in the background when you run the simulation. Now, in order to run simulation, process very simple. Just go ahead and run analysis. And now system view will detect that it has an HDL file. It will start HDL simulator, as you can see. And right now I am selecting a non-GUI mode. That means the model sim will be invoked in the background and it will be run. After simulation is finished, we have this data set and we look at the sum output and answer is seven. And that's what we were expecting because we had six and one as an input and output was expected seven. Now in some cases, you may also want to see the, the HDL interface and that can be done again by selecting this option under HDL setting display HDL GUI. Now the only difference with, with this option, uh, when you run simulation, now system you will detect you want to work in a GUI mode of model sim or Questa. It will start the HDL simulator and it will launch the HDL simulator for you to see. And all the test pin generated by system view, all the signals generated by system view, system view will do that job. User doesn't need to do anything of that sort. Now, the only thing we need to do here because we are in GUI mode and here is our sum output. Currently, it's not executed code. You can see there's no output available. In the command prompt here, just type run all as you would do typically to run any HDL code. And now here we can see the answer is seven and you have one, one, one in the, in the LSP to second number of bit and the third bit MSP is not used because we are only using, you know, seven as our answer here. So when we type run command here, the same thing will also get compiled here and you will again have this answer same as seven. So this is how simple it is to bring in your HDL code and use it along with system view. Hope you like the video. Stay tuned for next video where we'll do a lot more exciting things by bringing in a full HDL code of a QPSK transmitter and we will simulate it with the same RF mix signal test bench which we created in last uh, few videos. Thanks a lot for your attention.